Most people have probably heard that mindfulness, meditation, exercise, and getting enough sleep are good for us. But life happens. Sometimes we're too alert, too sleepy, or simply find it difficult to apply these top-down techniques like intention and gratitude. However, there's a faster, hardwired way to eliminate stress responses in our bodies, and it works in real time. Interestingly, we all do this involuntarily throughout the day, but when we're stressed, we often forget that we can also activate these systems voluntarily. This technique, which scientific studies, including those from my lab, Jack Feldman's lab at UCLA and others, have shown to be very effective, allows us to reduce our stress response in real time. The best tools to reduce stress quickly, or so-called real-time tools, are the ones that directly influence the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system governs our body's levels of alertness and calmness and functions largely on autopilot, though we do have some control over it through specific levers or entry points. One of the fastest and most physiologically grounded methods for self-directed calming is called the physiological sigh. Recently, there's been a lot of interest in breath work, where people sit or lie down and breathe deliberately for a few minutes to shift their physiology and access certain states. While breath work has its own benefits, this isn't what I'm talking about here. When I refer to physiological size, I'm talking about a well-established medical school textbook relationship between the brain, body, and heart. Take, for example, the hallmark of a stress response. When we're stressed, our heart rate speeds up and blood is directed to large muscles to help us react to threats or to just make us feel restless. Our face may flush, and we feel an urge to move or speak. While many of us think heart rate is involuntary, we actually have some indirect control over it. We can raise it by running or lower it by resting. However, there's a more direct way to control heart rate, through our breathing and the interactions between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Here's how it works. When you inhale, whether through your nose or mouth, the diaphragm, a skeletal muscle inside your body, moves downward as the lungs expand. This expansion creates more space around the heart, causing it to slightly enlarge. The blood inside this larger heart volume flows more slowly, which is registered by a group of neurons in the heart called the sinoatrial node. These neurons send a signal to the brain indicating that blood is moving more slowly. In response, the brain sends a signal back to speed up the heart rate. This means that if you want to increase your heart rate, you can simply inhale longer or more vigorously than you exhale. The opposite is also true if you want to slow down your heart rate. Longer exhales have a calming effect because they signal the brain to decrease heart rate. If you want to slow down your heart rate and calm your stress response, focus on extending your exhalation. This technique capitalizes on the relationship between the body, specifically the diaphragm and the heart and brain. How it works. When you exhale, your diaphragm moves upward, making the heart slightly smaller and more compact. As a result, blood flows more quickly through this reduced space, similar to how water flows faster through a narrow pipe. The sinoatrial node, a group of neurons in the heart, detects this faster blood flow and sends a signal to the brain. In response, the parasympathetic nervous system, via neurons in your brainstem, sends a message back to the heart to slow it down. So, if you want to calm down quickly, make your exhalations longer or more forceful than your inhalations. Why this works? This technique is attractive for stress management because it works in real time. Unlike certain practices that require you to set aside dedicated time, like breath work, massages, or saunas, this method can be used on the spot without needing prior practice or extensive learning. Of course, you'll still need to inhale, but by lengthening your exhalations, you can engage this calming pathway effectively. The Physiological Sigh there's a specific technique that builds on this approach called the physiological sigh. This was discovered in the 1930s and has since been studied in detail by labs such as Jack Feldman's lab at UCLA and Mark Krosno's lab at Stanford. The physiological sigh is something humans and animals naturally do, often before falling asleep or during sleep to reduce built-up carbon dioxide. 
It also happens involuntarily when people are trying to calm down after crying or when they feel claustrophobic. The diaphragm, a skeletal muscle, is unique because you can control it voluntarily. Unlike other internal organs, like the spleen or pancreas, which you can't directly influence, you can intentionally move your diaphragm anytime you want. This is possible because of the phrenic nerve, which connects the brain to the diaphragm. How to use the physiological sigh. When feeling stressed, try doing a double inhale followed by a long exhale. You might wonder, didn't you just say that longer inhales speed up the heart rate? Here's the difference. A double inhale-exhale sequence takes advantage of a subtle mechanism. The second, smaller inhale, even if it's just a bit of extra air, allows your lungs to expand fully, which helps clear out carbon dioxide and triggers a calming response. This simple technique can be used anywhere and anytime, giving you a quick way to calm down by taking control of your breath. When you take a big, deep inhale followed by a second, smaller inhale, sneaking in a bit more air, it helps to reinflate the tiny air sacs in your lungs. Your lungs aren't just two big bags. They're made up of millions of tiny sacs, which give your lungs a surface area as large as a tennis court. These sacs tend to collapse when we're stressed, causing carbon dioxide to build up in our bloodstream. This CO2 buildup contributes to feelings of agitation and jitteriness. When you do the double inhale-exhale technique, the second inhale reinflates those small sacs, making the following long exhale more effective at clearing CO2 from your body. This process quickly relaxes you by reducing the excess carbon dioxide in your bloodstream. In collaboration with David Spiegel's lab, David is the Associate Chair of Psychiatry at Stanford, my lab is conducting studies to explore how physiological size and other deliberate breathing patterns can help modulate stress and emotional responses. While these studies are ongoing, we already have substantial evidence from our lab, Jack Feldman's lab, and others showing that physiological size are one of the fastest hardwired ways to eliminate stress in real time. I'm excited to share this tool because, while we all know mindfulness, meditation, exercise, and sleep are beneficial, life can often prevent us from fully utilizing these practices. When you find yourself more alert and activated than you'd like to be, whether due to relationship stress, financial issues, or physical discomfort, you can rely on the physiological side. This technique bypasses one of the biggest challenges in stress management. It's hard to control the mind with the mind especially in heightened states of activation. When we're very alert, stressed, or tired, using top-down methods like intention and gratitude can be challenging. Physiological sighs, however, are a powerful way to bring down your level of autonomic activation or alertness, regardless of the situation. Whether you're waiting in line, dealing with everyday stress, or managing unexpected challenges, the physiological sigh, a double inhale followed by a long exhale, can lower your stress in just one to three cycles. Just two rounds of this breathing technique will reduce your stress levels quickly. And as far as I know, it's one of the fastest ways to do